Hi, so this is the tour of King Khafra's pyramid at Giza. So we've got the Great Pyramid of Khufu, which was built at Giza. Then um, the next king, the king's son, uh, King Djefra, he built his pyramid or he attempted to build a pyramid at Abu Ruwash. So there was a break in building at Giza. But King Khafra returned to Giza to build his pyramid. And he was a bit cheeky because he built a smaller pyramid. It was only 136 meters instead of 140 odd meters of Khufu's. But he built it on the higher part of the plateau. So when visitors go to Giza for the first time, they think that the optical illusion is that uh, uh, Khafra's pyramid is the Great Pyramid. Well, it's not. And you can identify uh, Khafra's pyramid because it's the only one of the three at Giza which still has some Tura limestone stone on top of the peak at the top of the pyramid. Um, now, King Khafra ruled Egypt from 2589 BCE for a period of 23 years. So it's quite a, a, a good long reign to finish a project. Whereas uh, Djedfra, who uh, built at Abu Ruwash, only ruled Egypt for eight years. So it wasn't really long enough to build or complete a project. Um, and we're talking about 4,609 years ago. So the other factor here is that um, once you visited King Khufu's pyramid, you should be at the Boat Museum. And it'd be very easy for you just to walk over to uh, King Khafra's pyramid. So that's what I suggest you do. So from Khufu's Boat Museum, you can head towards Khafra's pyramid. You need to tackle that first. So let's have a look at the plan of King Khafra's uh, pyramid complex. So you have the pyramid, then you have the Maltry Temple, then you have the Long Causeway leading down to Valley Temple, and then next to it is, is the Sphinx. So let's have a look at the cross section of King Khafra's pyramid. Now it's believed that this pyramid went under two stages of development. First of all, we had a, a, a burial chamber, the first, what's called the first burial chamber, and then the project was enlarged into what is now the king's burial chamber with the sarcophagus. Well, we can only guess that there was an enlargement plan at this time. Um, but what's interesting is both those chambers are underground. So no longer are, um, uh, is it a priority to put chambers in the structure of the pyramid? The pyramid itself is a solid stone pyramid on, on top. So the, um, all the passageways and that have been hewn out of the bedrock. And they're not worrying about the complications of building grand galleries, of cobbling the stones in or anything like that. So this is a much easier construction. So the there hasn't been that desire to follow the previous ideas of emerging from an underworld, being reborn as Osiris to then journey to the stars. And it could be because these kings from King Jedra and Kafra are see Ra as the main deity now. Maybe there's been a change of allegiance as Osiris being the focus the most important God, to now the sun god Ra being the most important God. Could be. We're never going to know for sure. We can only hypothesise about these things. So, <clears throat> you want to go inside there. It really is a nice visit. Down that descending passageway to the first burial chamber. Then up another one to the main burial chamber itself. And you'll notice that... Um, um, uh, it's quite small there. It's not, it's, not, it's not a big burial chamber. Remember, they had to hewn that out of the solid rock, bedrock. Um, but it's worth a visit. Let's go back to the Maltry Temple. Unfortunately, the Maltry Temple and the Causeway have been quarried away. And this could have been the Caliph of Cairo in 820 ACE. 
all of that Tura limestone above the peak of uh, Kafar's pyramid, that's all been removed, along with Khufu's, that was removed by the Caliph. So maybe the Caliph's workmen started on the Mortgy Temple and the Causeway. So we haven't got a beautiful full store there. Um, we haven't got a roof for any pictures or anything like that. Uh, we can only imagine what happened there. And we know that the Moultrie cult would have slaughtered animals just like they did at uh, Zosa's Step Pyramid and brought offerings there to replenish the king's spirit. So the king would make his nighttime journey in his, in his spirit form to the stars, to be with the gods. The afterlife to the nighttime sky, the stars are the gods. He would return back to um, back to his tomb, his mummified body inside his, his pyramid and rest. And then he would come forth during the day to receive the offerings to replenish his spirit. Now, why did they have to do that? Well, the Egyptians didn't know the world was round. They thought the world was flat. In their world, they see the world as being flat. Opposites, night, day, good, bad, etc. Um, and that's the activity that happened in the Moultrie Temple. We can only imagine the pictures that were on those inside walls of the causeway. Amazing. And I personally think that from the Valley Temple going all the way up to the Mortuary Temple would have been pictures of the king's life, his birth, his great deeds, him becoming coronated as a king, then him dying and then being buried into his pyramid. So there's activity at this site even when the king is dead. So the mortuary cult is installed, it's given lands to raise cattle, to raise wheat and barley, all the offerings to feed the king's spirit. And all those priests would uh, take it in rotation to work the lands that they were given tax-free, to serving, uh, performing those rituals at the pyramid. So let's come down to the Valley Temple, okay? And what a beautiful view from the Valley Temple up to the pyramid, wow. And in the Valley Temple, remember what I think happened in the Valley Temple. I think this is where they mummified the king's body. So when the king died, the boats brought his body over. The mummification was started and the preparation for the funeral in the Valley Temple. Once the king was interned into his tomb, it was all sealed up. That was the end of it. The Valley Temple, I still think, played a role. Now, if we have a look at the Valley Temple, the inner core stones is local stone from Giza, but the outside and the inside are red granite blocks. So that meant that when you first looked at the Valley Temple as a visitor, you'd see red granite. Maybe the causeway had red granite and the Moultrie Temple had red granite cladding as well. Now, I'm saying this because traces of red paint was found on the Tura limestone at the peak of uh, Kafra's uh, pyramid. And since there now seems to be a close allegiance with the sun god Ra, maybe he wanted his pyramid to appear red and all the other buildings. If we have a look at the niches cut into the stone floor, this is where the secondary role of the Valley Temple comes in as a serdab for visitors coming to um, um, this, this, uh, this, this place to ask favours of the dead king spirit. Because in those niches were the statues of the, of the king. So you can see they're seated, he's a, a seated statue, he's got Horus protecting him. He is the living Horus, that's one of his titles. He's wearing a Nemes headcloth. Now the Nemes headcloth represents Nekhebet's vulture wings as she flying over the king, warning him of his enemies. On top of his brow is Wajet, the vulture goddess of Lower Egypt, spitting venom into the eyes of uh, his enemies. So those two, two ancient goddesses, Nekhebet and Wajet, are there 
providing union of Upper and Lower Egypt. He is uh, Horus. He is the Nebtawi, the Lord of Two Lands. He is the Golden Horus. He who shines just like a god with gold, flesh made out of gold. It's all that, it's so romantic, it's so yummy, isn't it? Well, it is for me, that's, that's for sure. So, the Valley Temple's secondary role, in my opinion, others disagree, that it would became a serdab after the funeral. Next to the Valley Temple is the Sphinx. Now, the Sphinx is uh, uh, the head of a human, a man, uh, on a lion's body. Now, again, there are hypotheses about the Sphinx. One hypothesis is that King Jedfra, the previous king, built the Sphinx in honour of his father, King Khufu. Another one is, is that when, uh, well, and when King Kafar started building his pyramid, he usurped that into his valley temple complex. Could be, I don't know. But what do I think the Sphinx means? Well, we know that lions are regal, they're associated with royalty, and they're pretty strong. I think that the king's desire is to have the strength of a lion to leave his burial chamber to make that nighttime journey to the afterlife and back. If we have a look at uh, his pyramid complex, there is a small Queen's Pyramid incorporated into the structure. And there were a couple of boat pits which were robbed in antiquity. Remember, wood was very expensive in Egypt. It's not like in our Western civilization where wood is plentiful. There, to get good wood to make furniture, you have to import it from Lebanon, hundreds of miles away. So that is the tour of King Kafar's Pyramid. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, to make this a reality where I go to Egypt and make this video on site, a video which you can download onto your uh, uh, phone and use it as a tour on the site with all the useful information to understand what you're actually looking at, please support this project by going to GoFundMe and make a small donation of £3. Thank you very much. Bye for now.